And we are starting to look at something new this morning as we turn our Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Samuel Chain, I can see quite a lot of you online. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I can see Sarah. I can see Madam Evelyn Ogutu. God bless you. Long time. We need to hear from you. Praise God. I can see quite many of you. Now, It says, this thing command and teach. These things command and teach. In Message Bible, it says, get the, get the word out. Get the word out. Teach these things and don't let anyone put you down. Teach these things and don't let anyone get you out. Teach this thing and don't allow anyone get you out. Amen. Amen. This is very important. Get the word out. Get the word out. The word, that's the word of God. Teach all this thing and don't let anyone put you down. Because you are young. Don't let anyone put you down because you are young. In 1 Timothy, the same 1 Timothy, in the, in the King James Version, it said, this thing, command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen? Amen. So I read, I read uh, 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 the message Bible for you complete up to verse 12. In fact, I will read, let me read at once to up to verse, uh, verse 13 because that is where our text is coming from. In verse 13, it says, Till I come, give attendance to reading. See that? To reading. To exhortation. To doctrine. To doctrine. That word doctrine means teaching. I will now read complete amplified version for you. Sorry, uh, message Bible. Say, get the word out. Teach all these things. And don't let anyone put you down because you are young. Teach believer with your life by word, by dominion, by love, by faith, by integrity. Stay at your post reading scripture. Amen. Giving counsel. Amen. Teaching. Teaching. Giving counsel. Teaching. See that? This morning, I want to start that this, this uh, you can see these admonitions. Mm -hmm. 
The strength of early church emanate from this kind of counsel. You know, the early church became strong by living on such a counsel. That's where the early church draw their strength from. And therefore, this morning, we are looking at the place of reading the scripture. The power of reading the scripture. The power of reading the scripture. There is something God has been impressing in my heart to say to many people as I have opportunity to share with them for the past one week. Every time a teaching is out, it is a starting point for everyone. So don't condemn yourself. The teaching is coming to you to start a new life with you. The teaching is coming to impart you with a new lifestyle. So don't rule out yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't say, I don't know how to do it. The teaching is coming to teach you to know how to do it. So, for today, we are all starting. We are all what? Starting. Amen? Amen. We are all starting. So, don't rule out, don't say I'm not part of it. No, we are, we are just all beginning this aspect. Say, let no man despise thy youth. And then he went further to say, But be thou an example of believer, one, in words, in conversation, in charity, in spirit. And then he went on, in faith, in purity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Then he went to verse 13. He said, look, all this thing I ask you to be, let me give you an assignment that will make you to be able to become. Till I come, give attendance to reading scriptures, to exhortation, to doctrine. There are three there reading scripture and so we are looking at the power of reading scripture reading the word of god reading the bible it says stay in the message it says stay at your post reading scripture reading scripture you have seen some of you who have been part of uh, some of our program. You have seen we have introduced scriptural reading. For example, in our Sunday service, in our morning devotion, it's as a result of the discovery of the power of reading scripture. Christianity is not a one-legged race. Christianity is a combined diversity legged race. Give attendance to reading scripture. Very important. Today, many Christians, we have air in this area. And as we go in this series, you will see the consequence of that error in our, in our faith, in the journey of our faith. Scripture. Mike Mudod said something 
sometimes ago, many years ago, I think he said he read 40 chapters of Bible every day. 40. That's why he's a walking, you will soon become. So, looking at scripture every day makes us godly. I will explain all that for us. I'm just introducing it. But the, the point here is, we must now develop a culture of reading the word of God. In message it says, stay at your post, reading scripture. Stay at your post, reading scripture. I don't know, I don't want to prescribe how many verses you should read a day. But the good news is, I want you to begin to read the word. Then you will grow and gravitate to a higher level of how many of sort of, of the pages of the Bible you consume. Come at your pace. But let's start the journey of developing the habit of reading scripture. There are several ways of reading scriptures and enjoy it. You could be reading by looking at it from topical point of view. That means you pick a topic like sin and you want to read about what the scriptures say about sin. You can decide on your own that no, I'm going to pick it by character. Character point of view. That, that is biblical character. I say, oh, I want to be reading scripture by studying the life of men that are mentioned in the Bible. You can say, I want to study the life of Abraham. I want to read about Abraham. You can decide and say, I want to study the, 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 the Paul, Apostle Paul. It's a major character. You can also decide to study book by book. You can take Genesis, Exodus, Mark, Luke. You can also be selective. If I let me tell you, you can decide that you want to be guided by the Holy Spirit where to read. Many times I do that. I just pick my Bible and open any part of the Bible of my choice. Sometimes I do it prayerfully. And I read. Whichever method you apply, it will be fine. But make sure you are reading the scripture. Whatever method you bring in, all we are saying we must heed to this war. Paul, Paul, a man of that witty knowledge, for him to say, till I come, that is, I give you this assignment. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. I want to point out something to us here. It means you are not going to know the scripture because you are born again. There has to be that allotment of your time, allotment of your intention. That's why I say give. This one is within your power in your quest to grow in your faith. This is not God's responsibility. You are the one to give attendance. That word attendance could mean attention to reading scripture. Create time. Nobody has more time than you. All human beings are blessed with 24 hours. And this 24 hours define what your life becomes ultimately. So, what does it mean? It means management of time is what defines life. 
Give attendance. I'm out of the time you have. Give a portion some time to reading scripture. So, people love reading story of men. People love reading newspapers. They are reading what has happened that has no life to repeat itself. They are reading what cannot quicken them in most cases. But it is guaranteed that the word of God quickened. The Bible says, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when the Bible says, give attendance to reading, it means give attendance to contact life. Give attendance to contact the spirit of God. The word that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and life. So when you are reading the scripture, you are contacting divine life. When you are reading the scripture, you are contacting virtues of God himself. Give attendance to reading scripture. Give attendance to reading scripture. When you listen to, when you read a proverb, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And verse 20. It said, My son, attend to my words. It could also mean Reading, because, you know, it says give attendance. Now it says here, attend to my word. That is, in reading, you are gathering information that lead you to attending to God's word. In reading, you are in kind of listening. You are kind of extracting information. Say, my son attends to my word. And Paul said, give attendance to reading. Incline thy ear unto my saying. That's why I said, when you are reading scripture, you are contacting the life of God. You are contacting God himself. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Iron sharpened iron. Every time you sharpen your mind with the mind of God, your strength is renewed. You are sharpening up for life for that day. He said, let, not, let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. What will they do to you? For they are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. So when we are reading scripture, we are contacting the divine nature of life of God, God kind of life. That's what we are contacting. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Why is he health to their flesh? It brings good news. You are contacting good news. What does good news do? Good news, good information, bring joy. What does joy do to the body? Joy injects eternal life into our flesh. You know, the Bible says, a merry heart. Away 
of rejuvenating your system. At 80, cannot jump. Just give her good news. I remember one advert they used to do of uh, somebody who won a lottery of Safaricom. An old woman jumped when he saw that she won. Where did he get the energy to jump? The good news. When you hear or you come in contact with what God says about you, it automatically nullifies what man says. It nullifies and inject energy into you. When you hear the voice of God, every barrier becomes a breakthrough. And that's what we contact when we are reading the word of God. Give attendance to reading. Till I come, give attendance to reading. And when Solomon is talking about the same, he said, let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are alive unto those that find them and head to all their flesh. And he said, the information you are gathering, he said, he said, he put it this way, keep thy heart, you know he have advised you to keep the information in your heart. Now he now say, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of your life. I have discovered every life is a product of information. Every lifestyle is a product of the information received. It hasn't changed. God created the whole universe by the power of his word. What should become has a long way to be determined by what you are reading. A reading is contacting information. So when Paul says, give attention to reading scripture, he simply saying, contact divine information. This morning, this hour, I want to invite you to a new school of thought. I want to develop in you a new habit. I want you to journey with me as we begin to cultivate the, 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 the habit of reading scripture. The information you don't have is the information that cannot transform you. Many people want to be transformed, but they don't know the secret. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for anointing. And there is a place for extracting information from the word of God. If you are not informed, you will be deformed. Reading brings you to a point of being informed. And this time around, you are receiving information from your maker, the one that made you, the one that, that have audacity to describe you. The one that have audacity to, to describe you. The one that this description is accurate. Life guess, life information you some of the time is a guesswork. Right. What people say about you is a guesswork. Do you, you know that? Why do you react to them? They just say it, they are not sure. It is only you and God who is sure of who you are. What What God says about you is your descriptions. Amen. 
the authentic person that has anything vital to say about any product is the maker. Many life has been corroded because they live their life based on the opinion of people and not what God says about them. Suggestion of men will not bring you to your productivity. You need to hear, you need to extract information from the manual of the one that made you. What he says about you is what makes you to prevail over the challenges of life. Give attendance to reading. Give attendance to reading. Don't forget. Jesus said, one of the things reading does, he brings information to us. He brings truth to us. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Our bondage is to the parameter of our information. Our freedom is determined by how well informed that we are. And I'm talking about personal extraction of information, not what you are told by third party. As I come on your way on, on Wednesday, I'll be taking you through how even our own, our Lord Jesus Christ came to limelight the shell that covered him got broken. You know how chicken are hatch. When a, a, an egg is hatched, you see the chicken come out. That was what happened to Jesus. And all began by reading scripture. You can't see it and not become it. You can, I repeat this word as the practice shot for this broadcast. You cannot see it and not become it. And how will you see it when you are not reading it? Many have become the word of the society. Oh, the society say I'm broke. He became broke. The society say there's corona. He have corona. The society say, oh, children of today is by chances parents cannot get the best out of them. Your children become that. Because that is what information you are fed with. I have seen than every of my children we excel. Why? Are you a magician? Are you going to help them live their life? No. I have seen it to the point I have believed it. In the book of Psalm 112, what did he say? He said, the seed of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth. I have seen it and seen it till I don't believe there is bangi. I don't believe there is cocaine. I don't believe there is heroin. Because what you see, you become. How do you see? You see when you are reading scripture. May the Lord God of heaven bless you. Amen. May the Lord prosper you. Amen. Give attendance to reading scripture. You can start today. Tell yourself, I will read one chapter. Start anyhow. Along the way, you will correct and, get, and know which one, which method suits you. But here is it. A clarion call to everyone listening to me. Begin to attend to reading scripture. Reading scripture. And I want to tell you, the bigger the Bible, the better. Don't go and be reading one tiny food that you are struggling. No, there are also psychological environment that you have to prepare to make what you are reading to be engrafted on your heart. Get a, a good Bible, you know, that you are able to see the letter and you assimilate and get from one translation to another. You could say I read King James and I read a Message Bible. Time not permit me to read Amplify. And then as the word of God begins to register in your heart, it becomes the driver of your heart. Great action, it begins to, 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 to power you to different kind of action. You have read about prayer, then you suddenly see yourself 
becoming a prayer warrior. Please, these are the apostolic doctrine of the early church. We'll be looking at them one by one. That is what matured the Holy Ghost to come. We'll be seeing all that in this series. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord prosper you. My brother, my sister, that could be online right now, I've read in the Bible that all have sinned and become short of God's glory. And for God to bring us back to his glory, he sent his son Jesus Christ and said, whosoever receive him will not perish but have an everlasting life. If you are there, you are not born again. I would like to invite you this morning to have Jesus in your life as your Lord and your Savior. And if you are willing this morning to hack into this clarion call, I would like to pray for you and lead you to Jesus. And he will become right inside you and be your Lord and help you to overcome the challenges of life that you have not been able to do so. Are you ready this morning? Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner. But I come to you, Jesus. I ask for forgiveness. Forgive me all my sin and my trespasses. Wash me with your blood. I believe in the work of redemption. And I confess this morning and subscribe to your Lordship. Thank you, Jesus. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Because I believe you die and you rose from grave for my sake. I subscribe to that perfect work. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, brother, you are saved. As simple as that. That's the information here from the reading of Scripture. You are not the one to determine how you go to Jesus. Jesus is the one to determine how he will accept you. And you have done exactly what he says. So you are born again. Look for a Bible-believing church and begin to go to church. Let the pastor there know what you have done. May the Lord bless you and prosper you. I look forward to hear the great testimony of God's act upon your life as you become his sons and daughter. Be blessed. In case you are dead this morning and you have also fellowship with us and fellowship with God this morning, I want you to understand that our worship is not complete without an offering unto the Lord. Wherever you are, please, let's worship God with our substance. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing us into a new week. Thank you again for the marvelous thing you did in our women convention. Accept our offering. It is our token of worship to appreciate you and to establish our covenant of work relationship with you. And to also say we are part of your work. And we are promoting your work. We are sowing seed to what you are doing. Thank you, faithful Father. Accept our offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And in return, bless every one of us according to your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Let everyone cast your offering. Don't forget to cast it. Don't pray and not cast your seed. Do so right now before you forget. Have a blessed day. See you on Wednesday, the same time, and we'll be looking at this aspect of our Christian faith. And you will be amazed, the treasure that awaits you as you begin to develop the habit of reading scripture. Be blessed. In Jesus' precious name.